it varies wildly. Sure. Uh, some people will literally they're they're back in ketogenesis the next morning, uh, Sunday wild. morning, and then others, you know, it might not be till Tuesday. Um, and I've actually seen some people working with Rocky. You know, literally, it won't be till Friday, right before their next carb night, that they go ketogenic again. Um, <clears throat> so there, there's obviously a lot of variables at play it, that we don't understand. Right. Because I can't explain why it's taking that long in some of these cases. It just doesn't make sense. And even when they limit their carb load, you know, it'll still be almost a full week before they go ketogenic again. So, you know, there, there's just so much missing data. I, I can't say exactly why. I know if you work out, you can always make it happen faster. But, um, you know, even that's not a consistent. I can't say, well, if you do this workout on Sunday, you're guaranteed to be ketogenic Monday morning. It just there's no right no consistency that I've seen yet <laughs> where I can you know be absolutely okay do this exactly this is what's going to happen because it just might not. Well, that's what I like having this conversation with you, Kiefer, because you're obviously a smart guy and you're obviously a transparent guy because it'd be easy for you to say, oh, you know, have a carb night once a week and that's <laughs> it and you'll lose. But you know, a lot of people do that. They get married to their paradigm and they just say, this is it. Cut and dry, no, but you're telling us there's a lot of different things that happen that we don't even understand yet. So yeah. that's really great. I think that's fantastic. Um, what, uh, what type of training do you typically do with your clients specifically? Are you focused on bodybuilding? Um, <clears throat> it really depends. You know, I've got everything from people who run, play soccer, um, professional wrestlers. Okay. And not like Olympic wrestling, but you know, the TNA wrestlers, yeah, okay. and, gotcha. and those guys, um, you name it to bodybuilders, female competitors. So the training, it, it depends on at what level they're at, whether I'm going to play with their training or not. You know, if I'm working with Lori Lindsay, who's, you know, gold medalist U S soccer player, I'm not going to mess with her training. Obviously it's, it's all diet related, but, um, and the wrestling guys, they've got their training that they like to do. But if somebody just off the street, I'm going to try to get them to be as highest power output possible for their workouts. So that can be done in a number of ways. You know, lifting heavier weights faster, shortening your workout time, increasing the volume. You know, there's several different ways to do that. Yeah. So you just manipulate density, volume, intensity, and just try to get the most out of them depending on kind of what they like to do. Right. Yeah. My, my focus, I always try to focus on that power idea because it's the one consistency you can talk about time under tension and all these different things and look at where they fail and where they succeed. And really the common factor is power, which is the amount of work you do and the amount of time you right. do it, which can, you know, well, you know, be related to the amount of weight that you lift and the speed that you lift it. Right. Um, and that's essentially why I created the shockwave protocol. It's, a really fast way to have high power output in a short amount of time and still use heavy weights. Very cool. Very cool. So the reason why I asked is because there's a lot of people, you know, it's the, the Volick and Finney camp talking about ketogenically adapted <clears throat> athletes being able to burn so much more energy. And I, I hear good arguments on their side, but I just don't think that applies to power athletes. Where do you stand on that? No, I, <laughs> this is funny. I just had this conversation with Rob Wolf because, uh, Dr. Perlmutter was on his show. I heard that show, and I was like, this yeah. guy's really preaching this uh, this low-carb thing forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, A, you've got a couple problems. If you go low-carb indefinitely, then you start to get mitochondrial density um, or mitochondrial biogenesis, which is great in general. Um, the problem is for muscle size, if that's your goal, the maximum size your muscle fiber can obtain is inversely proportional to the mitochondrial density. So if your mitochondria, if your mitochondria density is going up, your muscles are actually getting smaller and you're limiting your maximum size. Okay. So for a hypertrophy athlete, that's why a low carb diet is not going to work. Right. Like in story. Um, if you're a power athlete, <clears throat> they're strongly misinterpreting a lot of data and missing things that I know they have to know. Um, for example, a lot of what they talk about, like you're more efficient, you burn more energy. Um, they use the rot, the rat heart studies. Oh, right. Like, you know, when you, when your heart is running on ketones, you get an increase of 
twenty percent efficiency, which is fantastic. And then they'll they'll say, and you can get it up to fifty, seventy percent efficiency, more efficiency. But what they fail to mention there is that's only with an injection of ketones, glucose, and insulin all at the same time, hmm. which is not going to happen on a low carb diet. Right. And then they talk about being keto adapted. Well, they're missing the fact that keto adaptation in humans means that your muscle tissue, your skeletal muscle, will no longer burn ketones. And that happens within about two weeks. So there's a very specific enzyme needed to burn ketones, and it's 3-hydroxybutyrate dehydrogenase. And it turns out all of your endurance muscle tissue, like the heart tissue, diaphragm, has high content of this enzyme. And your skeletal muscle tissue has very low content. And as you switch to a ketogenic diet, then in the heart and diaphragm, it goes up, which is good. But in muscle tissue, it actually goes down. So when so you can walk for longer periods of time, but... Yeah, you can, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Endurance athletes have a massive benefit. Um any other athlete, they have limited their high impact energy source because their muscles literally will not burn the ketones anymore. So this information, I mean, this information is like 40 years old. Right. So it's not like this is something that they just haven't noticed in the research yet. This is something we know concretely happens in all mammals from mice up to humans. So if you're keto adapted, your ability to produce power has gone to shit. End of story. There's no <laughs> way around it. That's, you know, it's, it's end of story. And so I'm assuming you'll say that on an individual basis is what it depends on how often you have to kind of re-glycogenate your muscles in order to keep that power output up? Exactly. Is that exactly. De- does that depend on how long somebody uh, stays in, in or how long it takes for them to go back to ketosis? Do you see that correlation at all? Um, <laughs> this is where I'm going to have to give like really big I don't knows. <laughs> That's fine. I, I, just, I like this. This is fun. Yeah. <laughs> You know, one problem I'm having, and I was of the camp of, you know, Volick, Perlmutter, those guys. It's like you need to be ketogenic for fat loss. And there's more and more data coming out that's saying that's not the case. Really, the most important thing are insulin levels being low. Um, so, So right now, I'm trying to figure out where where that paradigm is, like, you know, you can't look at blood markers. Those aren't helping me at the moment. I can't say, well, this is going to happen. It, it's, um, it, it's one of those things like, do you need to be ketogenic, especially if you're a power athlete? If you're a power athlete, it seems to go out the door. And by power athlete, I mean, that could be strongman, power lifter, um, bodybuilder, any of those kind of things. MMA fighters are, you know, definitely power, power athletes. Um, that ketogenic argument kind of starts to go out the door. So it, it's, it is highly individual based, but I can't tell you exactly what it's based on. And I right. definitely can't say, well, they need to go back into ketogenesis to get these performance benefits. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, That's I an idea. Don't know yet. <laughs> well, maybe one day we'll get you back on the call and you'll have solved that issue. <laughs> I'm diligently working on it. That's fantastic. Well, let me just ask, ask you two more quick questions, Kiefer. I want to leave people, because obviously we might have gone above some people's heads with what we're talking about right there. What is kind of like a simple, if you could summarize it in one paragraph, what's the best way that you say most people could get benefit from your protocols? Um, easily, like the simplest, very simplest, lowest level is just eat all your carbohydrates at night. You will get benefit. I don't care who you are. I don't care if you're obese, I don't care if you're a strongman competitor, power lifter, bodybuilder, runner, eating your carbohydrates at night will produce phenomenal benefits. Beautiful. And if you want to learn, lose more fat, just lower the amount of nights you have carbs. And if you want to get more power output out of it, increase the amount pretty much, right? There you go. Yep. You got it. Super simple. All right. Well, one more question for you, Kiefer. Obviously, you're a successful guy. You've written some really great books. A lot of people like to talk to you because you're at the top shelf of people in the nutrition and performance fields. Um, What's your secret to success, man? (laughs) I have no idea. (laughs) I literally just started a blog a few years ago and people liked what I had to say. And I, I really, if, 
if I could reproduce this, I would quit everything I'm doing and just turn people that I really liked into gurus. <laughs> popular, but I just, I really have no idea what I did. <laughs> well, just basically you... trying to fight the good fight, you know, trying to get good information out there, just like you're doing, just trying to get good information in front of people, trying to help them make sense of the research. So it's not just, oh, there's this reference, this reference. It's like, you know, we have to put everything in context and kind of keeping that as my primary focus of good information in the correct context and explaining it, uh, I think just resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. You know, with the power of the Internet, I feel like it's the people who are the most transparent and the most genuine that are going to get the most influence over everybody else and also the most um, the strongest influence over those people. And you are definitely one of those people, transparent and honest. And so I really appreciate you coming on the call, Kiefer. Thanks. I, I appreciate being on. I'm always happy to talk about this stuff. Cool, it's always man. fun. We'll have to have you on sometime when you figure out that solution to the, the, the <laughs> ketog ketogenic. <laughs> I'll, as soon as I figure it out, I'll send you an email. <laughs> Perfect, man. Thank you so much. Yeah.